Welcome to Git's Good. Let's get you started painting non-metallic metal, or as I'll be mumbling for the rest of this video, NMM. As you've clicked on this video, it's safe to assume you know what NMM is, so we can skip the talk about the old masters and how they couldn't paint with metallic paints. No, let's get down to the meat of it. You want to paint NMM for two reasons. It can make your models look more dramatic and interesting by giving you more control of contrast and light, and when you paint it for yourself, it feels like magic. There's no denying that NMM is a more advanced technique, and it can definitely be intimidating at first, but you owe it to yourself to try and see if it's something you want to take further. You can think of NMM as an evolution of the video we did on volumes. You simply can't paint believable NMM without a strong understanding of the volumes of what you're painting. Let's look at the example of the sphere from our volumes video. In this example, you can see the one obvious point of light and the smooth transition into darkness. Let's look at what happens when we make that sphere metallic. Suddenly, we have a lot more detail, reflections, and complexity to deal with. Now, it's not often that you need to paint a perfect sphere to this level of detail, but it gives you a sense of the added things you'll need to consider when painting NMM. Okay, you're excited. You've created your highlight guide based on our volumes video, now what? When you're first starting out, painting good NMM involves sticking to some core ideas. Number one, create strong contrast between light and dark. Two, ensure that you have bounce highlights. And three, edge highlight everything you can. Once you grow in comfort, you'll be able to change or break these rules, but at the start of your journey, keep it simple. Let's look at a good starting model for painting NMM, the sword. You can see that I've already highlighted where our highest value should be. Remembering our need for contrast, let's add a dark value for most of the blade, and a high value for the highlight. The smaller this highlight is, the shinier our end result will look. We can then blend these values. One of the things that you must keep in mind for NMM is that our transitions should be small. If we make them too big, we risk making our NMM look like stone or something a bit more flat. This diagram shows how you should think of your transitions for NMM versus traditional blends. With the main reflection in, we can focus on the bounce reflections to fill in the low value we added initially. These should be a high value, but not as high as the main highlight. The positioning of these bounce reflections is something that you can have fun with, and follow more of a rule of cool approach as opposed to being strictly physically accurate. Finally, we add in the edge highlights, with the option of varying the edges depending on the values of the surrounding colours, or picking out a single high enough value to use around the edge. Our sword is now complete. This gives us the basis for our NMM, and a realistic effect we can refine as we grow more confident. Have fun painting NMM, experimenting with different recipes and approaches as you grow more confident in your painting journey. Get painting, have fun, get good.